In this video, I'm going to show you how to add and subtract Cartesian vectors algebraically, as well as what that looks like on a graph. If this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more math videos just like this one that help you turn your frown upside down. All right, so at this point in your studies of vectors, you probably have a pretty good understanding of what a vector is. We know that it's a directed line segment with a magnitude and a direction. And in a previous video, I explained just what a Cartesian vector is. So if you haven't watched that one, I suggest checking that one out now. In this video, I want to focus on how we add and subtract Cartesian vectors, and I'll also show you how you multiply a Cartesian vector by a scalar. There's going to be a whole pile of examples of how you perform these operations. So let's get right into it. So I want to start off with a very basic overview of how to add and subtract Cartesian vectors algebraically. And we're going to start by looking at two vectors, vector u and vector v. And we'll say that vector u is just defined by the coordinates u1 and u2. So just picture a point on a Cartesian plane, and we're going to connect the origin to that point to form the vector u. And the same is true for vector v. If you take the point v1, v2 on a Cartesian plane and you draw a vector from the origin to that point, you've got vector v. All right, so we have two Cartesian vectors and we're going to start by looking at how to add them. It turns out it's a very simple process. All we have to do is look at the x component of each vector and add them together. We're going to place a comma and then we're going to add the y components of each vector. Now for this example, because we're talking generally without any numbers, we're just going to say that the x component of the vector is going to be u1 plus v1, or the first part of each vector, and the y component is just going to be u2 plus v2, or the second component of each vector. Now, as it turns out, subtraction of two Cartesian vectors is exactly the same, except we're just going to swap that plus sign for a subtraction sign. We end up with vector u take away vector v. It's just equal to the subtraction of the first components of each vector with a comma, followed by the subtraction of the second components of each vector. Exactly the same process as addition, except we're subtracting. So let's take a look at two quick examples to show you how this process works in practice. We're going to first start by finding u plus v for two vectors u and v, where u is 2, comma 2, and v is negative 3, comma 5. So you can see we're working with numbers here, and we're going to actually get to see how this process unfolds algebraically. Now remember, if we're adding two Cartesian vectors, all we have to do is take a look at the x component of each vector, add them together, write a comma in between, and add the y components of each vector. So let's take a look at what that looks like for these two particular vectors. So I can say that u plus v is going to be equal to a vector, and I'm going to take that first two, I'm going to write that, and I'm going to add negative three in this case. And I'm just going to put that in brackets to make sure I'm keeping my sign straight. I'm going to put my comma, and then I'm going to take this second two, and I'm going to add that to this five, right? So I've got two plus five. And I'm going to close that square bracket, because remember, we're working with a Cartesian vector here. Our result of u plus v should also be a Cartesian vector. And so we know that 2 plus negative 3 is really just the same as 2 take away 3, also known as negative 1. And we know that 2 plus 5 is just equal to 7. So we could say that our Cartesian vector u plus v is equal to negative 1, 7. Now let's take a moment to interpret this vector addition graphically. So you can see here I've drawn both vectors u and v by plotting 2 comma 2 and negative 3 comma 5. I've drawn the vectors by starting at the origin and reaching out to those two points. Now I'm also going to draw the resultant vector, negative 1, 7. And you can see I've kind of got a mishmash of three vectors here, and it's kind of hard to really understand what you're looking at. What exactly is this resultant vector for these two Cartesian vectors? Now remember, when we're talking geometrically or on a graph, vector addition really just means taking those two vectors and placing them from tip to tail, and then drawing the resultant vector. So if I arrange these two vectors from tip to tail, you'll see that this resultant vector fits snugly right in between. So hopefully this sort of helps you understand what you're doing when you're adding two Cartesian vectors. You're creating a resultant vector that's going to take you from the beginning of the first vector to the ending of the second vector. All right, so let's stick with these same two vectors, u and v, but this time we're going to find out what happens when we subtract u minus v. And remember, the approach is going to be very similar. We're going to take our two vectors but this time we're going to take 2, we're going to subtract negative 3, right? So if I write 2, I'm going to subtract negative 3. Again, just putting brackets to keep my sign straight. I'm going to place a comma, and then I'm going to take 2, and I'm going to subtract 5, just like this. And remember, I'm going to close that square bracket. I'm going to clean this up a little bit here, and I'm going to say that 2 take away negative 3, that's just 5. 
and we know that to take away five is negative three. Okay, I'm gonna close that bracket because remember, we're working with two Cartesian vectors here, and when we subtract Cartesian vectors, the result should be a Cartesian vector. And again, I can head over to a graph and interpret this resultant by plotting both of these Cartesian vectors. And remember, with subtraction of vectors, we take the second vector, we flip the direction, and then we add. And we place those vectors tip to tail, and that allows us to draw our resultant vector. And in this case, you can see that when we do that, we end up with that 5, negative 3 vector that we found in our subtraction example. All right, I want to look at a few mixed examples of addition and subtraction of Cartesian vectors just to make sure that you fully understand how to apply these procedures. And we'll start by looking at two vectors, u and v. u is defined by 5, negative 7, and v is defined by 2, 3. Those are two Cartesian vectors, and we're going to find out what u plus v is. Now remember, all we're going to do is take those first two components, add them together, take the second two components, add them together, and we're going to end up with our resultant vector. So doing that in this case is going to look something like this. We're going to open that square bracket, we're going to add 5 plus 2, and we're going to put a comma, and we're going to add negative 7 plus 3. Right? So that's going to look something like this. We're going to close out that square bracket, and we'll just clean things up here a bit. We're going to end up with 7 negative four, right? So that's going to be our resultant vector if we were to add these two Cartesian vectors together. All right, so I want to look at a much more complex example, and you can see that this one actually involves multiplication of a scalar by a vector. And I didn't walk you through like a formal example of how to do this because I find this is a pretty simple process, but I will show you how to do that here because that is going to come up as we perform this vector subtraction. All right, so in this case, we're still working with those same two vectors. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by writing out that 3, and we're just going to place vector u next to that 3 so that we can find out what that multiplication is going to look like. So we're going to have 5, we're going to have negative 7, we're going to close out that square bracket, and you can see we're subtracting a scalar multiple of 2 by our v vector. Okay, so that's going to end up looking something like this. And this is where we're going to start multiplying that scalar by our vector. And taking a scalar and multiplying by a Cartesian vector is very simple. It's essentially the distributive property. If you think back to your studies of earlier mathematics, we're just going to take that 3 and multiply by each component. So we'll say that this is going to end up as 15. 3 times 5 is 15. And we're going to put our comma, and we're going to have negative 21. Right? That's going to be a scalar of 3 multiplied by our u vector. So you can see that our magnitude has increased by a factor of 3 as a result of that scalar multiplication. And we're going to keep going by applying a similar process with that 2. We're going to put our subtraction and we're going to multiply that 2 in to produce 4 and 6. And so you can see at this point, we're really at just a simple subtraction of two vectors problem, similar to what we just did with our addition of two vectors, but this time we're going to subtract. I wanted to show you kind of a complex example because these things can get kind of scary looking, but as long as you understand vector addition and subtraction and this concept of scalar multiplication, hopefully you can follow along. So we're going to clean this up a little bit by applying our vector subtraction. Remember, we're just going to take that 15, subtract that 4, and we're going to take that negative 21 and subtract that 6. So doing that is going to produce 11 and negative 27 as our resultant vector. All right, so I hope these examples give you an idea of what's possible when it comes to adding and subtracting Cartesian vectors. And hopefully you were able to make some connections to your understanding of adding and subtracting vectors geometrically. Just remembering that when you add or subtract two vectors, you're really just producing a resultant vector.